as we keep on studying about the Abraham's journey. So this morning, let's continually prepare our heart as we will continually know about him. When we are studying about Abraham's journey, as we said, may we see ourselves there. It's not only a story, but God is using him as a teaching material so that well, while also we are living in this earth, we know how to live. Through the life of Abraham, so when we are about to listen and we are having this uh, series about his life, as we said, we will take this for, for almost two months. We'll be taking this for almost two months. But let us always be excited that in every place as kung manganap na panana, hala nga na ngagantayo, hala nga experience ni Apostle Paul, or I mean ni Abraham, but it should be also our own experience. Amen? And so, once again, let us continually awaken ourselves. Can we just once again clap our hands for the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ? This clap belongs to God that we have the reason to worship our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. So, let us, our message this morning is the next place, the place of Bethel. What is the, in the place of Bethel? In that adatuin nga naranasan ni Apostle, I mean ni Abraham. So, let's review as we said, going back, can you show the map of the journey of Abraham? The journey of Abraham, he first received his calling from the Ur of Chaldeans. So that place, but before that, what was the calling? God said, leave your country, leave your people, and leave your household, and go to the land that I will show you. Where is that land? That is the land of Canaan. That's why he said, you need to leave, but leave your country. Why? What is that place of Ur, Ur of Chaldeans, as we have heard, that is the place of ghost, place of idols. And even his family, his father was an idol worshiper, and he is making images. So naturally, if you'll be looking, they don't really worship our Elohim God. The opposite, they worship other gods. And believers, they are not really Christian during that time. And even he said, leave your brothers or your family who is his brother his brother is nahor nahor it means delay and haran dryness but in that place of ur before he went out his brother haran died natayon nga dagus han nga naibagano kasanungan natay but his father died but nahor stayed in that place so only abram and even his father tera and lot and with his wife sarai Move out from the Ur of Chaldeans. Can we go with the journey? And he did not directly went to go to Canaan. This is the place of Canaan, but he first went to Haran. What is also the place of Haran? It is dryness, but when he stayed there for 15 years, he continually know God because of the life of people who are living there. Those people who are living there are righteous men. Who knows and who have their faith. So because of them, Noah, I mean Abraham, learned our Lord Jesus Christ. Because of them, the faith of Abraham was strengthened. And after he was there for 15 years, so almost he was 75 years old. So we can see little by little, as God said, whatever things that he have done, it should be done. But Abraham did not really obey God. God said, leave your family. But he did not leave. Talaga ngayon, in tugot na pay. But in the war of Chaldeans, his brother died. In the place of Haran, his father died, the idol worshiper. When his father died, that's the time he entered Canaan. It means there were no disturbance already. That really, Abraham can focus to his calling. But who is with him? Sarai and Lot and with Abraham. Little later on, we'll be looking about also Lot. So, when he entered Canaan, the first place, our message last Sunday about the place of Shechem. What is all about this place of Shechem? He went there, built an altar, and it, when we say Shechem, it means shoulder. Shoulder signifies power and ability. 
And when he went to Shechem, there was the tree of More. When we say More, teacher or teaching. He gained and knowledge and wisdom of our Lord Jesus Christ. When he entered that Shechem, it is the place like for us, he was just a newly born Christian. Hanapay nga talaga ang amo ni Apo Diyos. Praise. No. Hanapay nga talaga ang amo ni Apo Diyos during that time. But in that place of Shechem, that's the time that, ah, little by little, he keeps knowing more our Lord Jesus Christ. Even for us, when we are still newly born Christian, Hantay mo talaga ang among dagos ni Apo Diyos. Hindi pa po natin talagang kilala ang Panginoon. But little, little by little, along our Christian journey, we keep on knowing more our Lord Jesus Christ. So in the place of Shechem, He gained power when He knows our Lord Jesus Christ. And this morning, let's continually move on to the place of Bethel. So even Elohim, Lohi, Elo, and El and Lohim. So, so in this, when we say house of our Lord Jesus Christ, Abraham went to Bethel. It means he went to the house of God. Historically also, it was an important town in the re religious history. Even for Jacob, Jacob also went in this place of Bethel. And one of the scenarios in his life, because Jacob, okay, not Abraham first, I will be talking about Jacob. Jacob, when he ran away from his brother Esau because he get the blessings, and along the way, before he arrived Padan Aram, he was so tired. Siyempre, nag-nag na, awan tilugan that time. Sa kamobile. So when he was tired, he slept. And when he slept, he had a dream, a stairway from heaven, from the ground to the heaven, and angels were ascending and descending. And after he just woke up and he said, surely the presence of God is in here. So he called also that place as Bethel. Different experiences of people in the Bible. And when we are about to study this word Bethel, our prayer also this morning and our challenge is that when they encounter our Lord Jesus Christ in that place, our prayer also may we encounter our Lord Jesus Christ in his very presence. Amen. So God is a place of testimony. As we said, first he built altar. That altar signifies worship. Why we are here in the house of God? We said it is to worship God and to hear the testimony. It's a place of testimony. When we usually say that testimony, it comes to us positive. Dapat positive the testimony tayo ng buwan ako mga negative. First one that we can find in here is that it has a plentiful bread. It means spiritual food. Dito ay sigbaan. Ito'y pala ni Apo Diyos. Ito'y ito yung agdanod sa saon ni Apo Diyos. Amen? Amen. Makadanod kayo pati sa saon ni Apo Diyos. DJ Bar? Ah, music, word, song. Makadanod kayo pati sa saon ni Apo Diyos. DJ Tungitag or DJ Loto? Ah, at puro numbers. Di madanod tayo. Nga pa, DJ Market. Puro. Bili na kayo dyan sa Uki. O, at say, at naman di matidat ko ma. So at this itata, we are here because I know I want to go in the house of God to listen to the word of God. So this moment, while we are listening, though there are many distractions, but let us not allow, but let us focus our heart and our mind to listen to the word of God. Amen? I believe God will speak to us in this very special way. As it says in John chapter 6, verse 15, But here is the bread that comes from down from heaven, which a man may eat and not die. Jesus Christ is referring himself. He said, I am the bread of life. He who will eat this bread will have life. Yes, it's true. Every time that we listen to the word of God, I believe na it will not kill us. No. It will give us life more to grow. Why? He have come to give us life. Unlike Satan, he will kill life. But the word of God, he said, is living and active. It's a word that will continually endure to each one of us. So what is the importance of the word of God? How do we value the word of God? You said you come here to listen to the word of God. So, what is the help of the word of God to us? First one, it is the nutrients to our spiritual life. It will give and supply us nutrients to move on in our spiritual life. If we are eating food, okay, had you taken your breakfast this morning? Sinugnangan, inatikin na niyo. If you have, you have eaten your meals in a day, you have physical strength to work. 
Ngayon no, kayo nga lang, you are weak, you cannot work. Same is spiritual in us. If we are not able to feed our spiritual life, if we have problems, we cannot overcome it. And in, in our food, it has particular nutrients. Those who are nutrition dietetics, they know how to balance kano they diet. If you need potassium in your body, what will you eat? Banana. Banana. If you, you need vitamin C, orange. If you need like that, orange. So specifically, food has also their nutrients to supply our physical body. We'll put it in a spiritual way. Also, we need our, our spiritual food, the Word of God. So in every day of our life, we have different situations. But as God, they said, give me my daily bread, O God. What do we mean by daily bread, Lord? Give me the exact Word of God in my exact situations. Example, you are in need. You remember the Word of God. God is the one who provides everything. Okay. Example, you said sometimes you always call to God and you don't know your your, the way of your life. It says in Jeremiah, call unto me and I will answer you. So there are many promises in the Bible. With all this, it should be our day. So what the idea important siya. Why we need always to take and we are always encouraged to listen to the word of God. Read the word of God. Meditate the word of God. Mm -hmm. Last challenge that we had heard last Sunday was our five fingers. We need to hear and see the word of God, but it's not enough. After that, we need to study. When we study, we need to write the word of God. That's why today we acknowledge every one of us. Yes, we are taking down notes. We cannot hundred percent memorize everything. And when we we write it, we need to meditate or we memorize and meditate so that we can hold and apply in our life. We are encouraged that we need to carry our Bible. Yes. Today, we have our gadget sometimes. Yes? So, uh, I have already Bible in my gadget. When you are reading, sometimes temptation comes. It pops up. Facebook, one message. O, di ba? When you are reading, in scroll, look at DJ Facebook, mas ado. Ay, man, dama, buya ka, inyakati news ko. Naawad ka DJ application ti Bible. That's why the Word of God Bible was we are being encouraged. May we have our personal life. Then you can also highlight it so that when you are reading, you, when you highlighted that word and when you remember, ah, this is the time that I experienced like this. So that is how the word of God is moving. <laughs> Mangyari, itibiyag tayo every time that we are listening to the word of God. Let us not go out the same, the kunada that time, but when we are listening to the word of God. This word of God, the second uh, function it will it is a sword that will cut off the bitter roots in us who among you still have their bitter roots ay awan na ulitak sino ti the bitter roots na pay kanya the sometimes sinful nature ay awan la tao thank you for those who are <laughs> okay so if, for us christians even though still we are christian we are already christians still sometimes there is sinful nature in us we cannot remove by our own that's why sometimes i cannot remove i want to remove this one but why i cannot yes we cannot really remove but only the word of god can remove that one can cut off that bitter roots in us what are all these bitter roots it says in galatians the sinful nature in us maybe idolatry discord jealousy selfish ambition in anything what the character that is not pleasing to god that is still our sinful nature that's why we need to remove this we cannot totally remove it but little by little when we are reading the word of god the word of god will teach us the word of god will strengthen us the word of god will help us to realize ah this is not a right thing a right character i need to do it only the word of god can cut that one that's why we are being encouraged. Keep on reading the word of our Lord Jesus Christ. Keep on. What is the greatest treasure that we must possess? Material things, this world, we cannot. This is just temporary. But the greatest treasure that we need to have is the word of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Yes, we can take it in this kingdom. And let us always remember that it should be our twin. Dapat dito kakambal tayo. Wherever we are going, we need to take it. That's why when 
you remember our leader encouraged us before, wherever you go, put Bible in your table. If you have your office as students before, I remember he asked us to bring our Bible. So when I was still in high school and college, I remember I always bring my Bible and put it in my bag. Though sometimes I don't read, but when I see it, okay, I will read. So wherever we go, always carry. We are the gospel bearer of our Lord Jesus Christ to proclaim the word of God in our life. So the first challenge in here, let us always come in the house of God because there is a plentiful, abundant spiritual food. We just need to open our hearts to listen. We just need to open our mind to take it in our faith. As it says in Matthew chapter 5, verse 6, can we open? And all together, let us read this passage. Go. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Amen. Blessed, kuna na mapalad, nagasat kanu. When we say blessed, it's not all. Not all people really hunger and thirst. How about you? Do we hunger and thirst for God? What is the promise? You will be filled. Today, people are hungry for material things. People are thirsty for anything to supply their outward needs. But no, let us first satisfy our spiritual needs. Let us first hunger for God. If we are fed up spiritually, our material things will be provided by our Lord Jesus Christ. So, if you want to be a blessed one, let us continually hunger and thirst for the Holy Spirit and even for the Word of God. Amen? Yes. And the second one is that, what is in the house of God? As we said, there is a plentiful bread. There will be have also have an earnest desire for a higher level of faith. Why we need to go in this church? So that our faith will be strengthened when we keep on hearing the word of our Lord Jesus Christ. As he said, faith comes from hearing, from hearing, from hearing, from hearing the word of God. Hantay ko mga maumuma nga agdang nagtisa sa uni Apo Diyos. Day tamanin, but no. Word of God, is he said, it's Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, han nga maumuma kanya tayong agit itad timinsahin na. Kanya tayo mad, let us always take. Though sometimes we cannot understand. But Lord, is our prayer, that's the work of the Holy Spirit. Lord, please allow me to understand your word of God to mo today. Allow me that I can apply your word of God. It will not just pass it by, but Lord, it will not just return to you empty, but it will accomplish whatever you have promised towards me. Faith is very important in the life of each one of us. Those who have faith in our Lord Jesus Christ this morning, can we say, Amen? Yes, faith, those who have faith, those who have received Jesus Christ, salvation comes towards them. Let us be thankful that God has chosen us and has given us this faith. It's not us who have chosen God. Lord, I will believe you. No, it is this because of God. That's why He has given us this faith. But this faith comes... Or how to have this faith? It is by the grace of God. As it says in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. Yes, it's not by our own. It's not by our own accomplishment. This is not from yourselves. But it is the gift of God. Agpasalamat tayo. Let us be thankful that God has given us salvation. And today, early today, han nga noumay pa lang nga panawon. As young as you are, and even in this time, let us give thanks that God has given us this salvation, faith to our Lord Jesus Christ. But how did this grace come? When we humble ourselves to God. That's why may we always humble ourselves. It means when we humble, surrender, submit, Lord, I need you. Without God, we cannot do anything. Without our Lord Jesus Christ, as it says in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 34, he makes proud mockers, but gives grace to the humble. When we always humble ourselves to God, the grace of God will flow in each one of us. We need the grace of God. When we say grace, the ability to do something that God wants us to accomplish. We cannot do by our own, but when the grace of God will come to us, it will sustain us. So how important is our faith to our Lord Jesus Christ? You will be reading your Bible in the book of Hebrews. Pamati di talaga ang akit kita ni Apo Diyos. What can, what can please our Lord Jesus Christ is not who we are, no inati inaramit tayo, no kasanot yung agbyag, no. But every time, God is looking our faith. How is our faith today? Is it growing? 
Is it being strengthened or weakening or losing awanen? No. In the book of Hebrews chapter 11, God commended all the faith of people during this time. As it says in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6, and without faith, it is impossible to please God. Impossibly. Only our faith can please God. That's why, because anyone who comes to Him must believe that He exists and that He rewards those who earnestly seek Him. Take note, the word seek Him, there is the word earnestly. Passionately we desire God. Han nga cold warm. Nga umay to church lang, okay, nagtugaw nalpas no. May we have the hunger and even the desire to meet and encounter our Lord Jesus Christ every time that we are coming in His very presence. And in here, there are 30 persons nga inaisurat ni Apostle Pablo. By faith, by faith, by faith. But all of them, they were commended by God. They were recognized by God. How about us? If Jesus Christ will, look, will see our faith, will God recognize our faith? Ma-appreciate nga ta ni Apo Diyos Tipamati tayo. You can evaluate it. Sige. If you know God will, God will uh, appreciate it, can I see nods? Uh, no haan pai. Can I see like this? Inyangay garut. We desire, I believe, like this. Lord, please recognize. Lord, commend our faith. We desire to grow more. Yes, that's why we are here. Yes. That's why you are here, so that the more that we will level up our faith when we are hearing the word of our Lord Jesus Christ. Many times in the Bible, God always recognizes and sees the faith. One illustration in here, the life of one of the Canaanite women. This Canaanite woman has a daughter who has, who has suffering from demon possession for how many years? But when he talked to God, he said, I am not here for you, but for others. Okay, when you give that bread, even though the small particles mumug, tikunana, I can take it. That is the faith of the woman. That's why what did our Lord Jesus Christ told to that woman? Let's open in Matthew chapter 15, verse 28. Dear woman, Jesus said, your faith is great. Wow. Had you heard someone recognizing your faith? Wow, really? Your faith is great. Because they can see something in you. Great, in other word, Greek, mega. Mega faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Your request is granted and her daughter was instantly healed because of the faith. Faith can do something in our life. Faith have that great thing impact in our life because of his faith, her faith, her daughter was healed. So because of our faith, something's going to happen in our life. That is a great thing. So let us not give up. Let us not be discouraged, but always put in our mind, Lord, when you have, this, when you have given this faith to me, help me that I will strengthen this faith and to go for a higher level of this. Let us not allow to go down. But Lord, this faith, and we will not take care of this, but Lord, no. When God has given you faith, as I've said, give things. Not every people was given faith. When nukuma aduti taong adati pamatida, am amin nga tao may to church, but no. Not all people still have this faith to God. But blessed are we when God has given us this faith. Let's keep on strengthening this faith to each one of us. Amen? Even the apostles, they said, Lord, increase our faith. That was their prayer. Imagine they are already apostles. But still they ask God, Lord, increase our faith. Why? Because of the situation, sometimes, ngang umay ka niya tayo, adama ti part nga ag-weekend. Nag-weekend ba they faith you, hindi ada ti problema tayo? Yes, as human, it will weaken us. But that's why when we felt weak, we need to run in the house of God, presence of God. Lord, strengthen once again my faith. So that when I face these things, I will pass and you will recognize my faith. So that is the blessing. That is the testimony that we can find in the house of our Lord Jesus Christ. Another one. Letter C. We can know the values of Christian living and life. We can see this is a process. First one is that we had the Word of God. Through the Word of God that we keep on knowing, we have the desire that our faith will go 
more deeper, higher level of faith. And we have this faith, we can know the value of Christian living and life. Before, honestly, as a Christian, we don't know how to live. As a Christian, right? Ah, as a Christian, when we are learning, ah, I need to attend church every Sunday because this is a way and this is the command of God. I need to give, uh, when I go, I need to have my offering. When I live, I should remove all this sinful nature. As I've said, the Christian living way, should, we must be different with unbelievers. Our earthly life must be different today as Christians. How did we live before as unbelievers? Dapat han ko mga agpadpada today nga we are already Christian. Diti ko na na. We know how to live as in our Christian way. Pa Christiano nga pa nagbiag. Kasano tayo ba nga agbiag? Dapat makita na nga nagbaliw tayo. No iti ikat kanain tayo nga apan ijay. Papapanin tayo ba? <laughs> when we always go out and in this world, or, or vices, or computers, or for young people, or even for others. They give value of this world, rather giving value to go to the church. Apanak may nalang agtrabaho kot Sunday. But if you know you are a Christian, we need to go to the church. We Let us not compromise as we are Christian. That is how... We need to change the way, our lifestyle. The lifestyle of a Christian should be different from the lifestyle of unbelievers. No, kasi ano tayo nagbibiyag iti, dapat agbaliw tata. Iso day kunana. We can only know this one every time that we are hearing the word of God or when our faith will strengthen, we can give up things. We cannot easily give up things that will satisfy us. Yes. It, this really give you joy. We don't have ability. But when your faith was strengthened, Little by little, you can remove these things. And even it says, value our life. Why do we live today? Do we live for our own? Apa yung agpiyapiyak tayo today? Do we live for ourselves? Some people live by the, for their own life, for their own, for their own plans. But no, always remember the purpose of creation of our life. We are created by God for His purpose. What is that purpose? First step, that is to continually identify or always acknowledge the identity of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. What is the seven identities of God, if we still remember? Wow, okay. Omni. Omnipotent. Oh, yeah, thanks. I heard it. Okay, next. Omni. Okay, next. God of grace. God of mercy. And just this well praise the lord no? at least that there is okay that is one way that we are really growing up and desiring to become a big fish to magnify our lord jesus christ our faith should not be the same like before when we are an infant christian there are stages of christianity the infant the child adolescent youth but let us deserve to become a sons and father in our spiritual journey with our lord jesus christ and also the last one in here, it says here, let us go to the house of God because we can experience the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the presence of God, we can feel the favor, the guidance of God. Let us just open our hearts so that we can feel the presence of God. We know God is moving, but sometimes if our heart was hardened, even though God wants to speak to us, but if you are not able to open our hearts, our mind, He cannot. But allow God, allow the presence of God to saturate us, us every time that we are in His house. And every time that we are in His house, God will continually sustain us. This is also one of the prayer or even the confession of Moses in the book of Exodus chapter 33 verse 14. Exodus 33 verse 14. The Lord replied, My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. The presence of God is very important. Even Moses, Moses said, If you will not go with me, if your presence will not go with me, I will not go. Yes, we cannot do things for ourselves. We cannot do things. We cannot live without God. That's why we need the guidance. When we say presence, we need the attention of God. Today, as it is the Lord's day, every people are worshiping God today. But the question, do we get the attention of God? Even though we are here, 
Is the eyes of God looking to each one of us? Many people around this world. But remember, no. Even though you are here, but if you are not able really to put and also have that heart, we cannot. That's why every time, let's get the attention of God. Amen? Let's give our best. As He said, let us desire, Lord, as I am here. Dapat ang kong asayangan, adatuyak lagarudan, help me that I will encounter you. I will, this is really a moment with you, O God. So that every Sunday, it will be a special day. It's not only our ordinary Sunday, but we will have a different new experiences every Sunday. Encountering God through His very message to us. So that is the thing that we can find in the Bethel. It is a place of testimony. Why? There is abundant Word of God. Through the Word of God, it will strengthen our faith to have a higher faith. With our faith, we will know how to live in our Christian living and life. And when we have this, we can feel the presence of God. And the number two, blessing in the place of Bethel is that it is found in the north place, but also they call it a place of suffering and coldness, but it is the dwelling place of God. Yes, we are called to suffer for God persecution. As a Christian, not everything is good. But it says in the eighth beatitude, blessed are you when you are persecuted. In our Christian life, really, not everything is good. Not everything is a comfort zone for us. Suffering really will come to us. But believe in your suffering, God is there. In your problem, believe that God will sustain us. That's why it, God is dwelling in this place. No. As he said, we are all in this world for training to meet our Lord Jesus Christ. We are in this earth so that he will test more our faith to draw near to our Lord Jesus Christ. So with the story that is all about the meaning of Bethel, let us continually be encouraged. The more nga, ay, umayak pa yung church. Apanak pa yung serbi. Ay, umayak pa yung dayaw kini Apo Diyos. If you will go back with the story, then, when Abraham, yes, went to Bethel, but along the way of his journey, weeks, he, he experienced also that his faith weakens. Nag-weaken mo de pamati ni Abraham. Even for us sometimes, it's not all that we have that passion, strength to worship God, even our Christian life. But the moment that he did not already encounter God, little by little, he is going away from God. For us sometimes also, when will the time that our faith will weaken? When will the time that we don't have any passion? When we start not to read the word of God. When we started not to attend worship. For instance, uh, only this Sunday I will get up, I will be absent. Okay? Only this Sunday. The following Sunday, ay adapay aramidak. The following Sunday, ay adapay gayam kastoy. Parang normal na lang, madam dama, pinpanaw ka gayam mo. Little by little, you cannot see there was a big gap already why sometimes you cannot go back already. Mabainta yun, nagsublik. Ngamday tati technique ni Satan. Sometimes I just want to have rest. Okay, so you are not able to to read okay. the word. Ngam no once ngan ka nagbasa little by little makita normal na lang in a one month you are not able to read. So don't let us not allow it, but let us be sensitive because of this. If we weaken our faith or we don't hold the value of Christian living, we don't hold our faith, we don't hold the word of God. What will happen to us? In the time of problems, the more that we will go away from God. Some Christians today, why do you move out from church? They said, I have a problem. Right? Ngam dapat mas kakaro tayo ng umasid na kinapo just na the problema. Amen? Dapat na the problema hante yung pumano. This is the situation of Abraham. Abraham, because he loosens his faith, when there was famine, he went to Negev. Can we find the map? Okay. So, Negev, it means Egypt. Abraham did not went to Egypt because there was famine. No. Because Abraham's faith loosened, weakens. He don't have power to stand and overcome that problem. He find another solution. Okay, Bethel, there was famine. Okay, I will go to Egypt. There is plentiful of food. But is God moving in that place? No. 
Sometimes that is our situation, Christians. If you have problem, we tend to find solutions in the world. World signifies Egypt. We find, we find comfort from this world, rather comfort from God in this church. No. So when, when Abraham went to Bethel, I mean to Egypt, what happened? What is in the place of Egypt? Place of shamefulness. If, if Bethel is the place of testimony, opposite is a place of shamefulness. Why? They have lies. Abraham and Sarah started to lie to Pharaoh with the story. If they will ask you, tell them, you are my sister, not my wife. But did they lie when they are in Bethel? No. They know the value of Christian living. I must not lie. I must tell the truth. But when they went to Egypt already, easily they were, easily they were tempted to lie. They received the blame of Pharaoh. They have a disgraced life. So, that's why if you will be looking, you, do you want to experience this? No. That's why let us always draw near to God. Let us not go far. Egypt is a downhill road. Kuna na to'y downhill. Pababa. E jay map, e jay, jay map nga nakita tayo, from Bethel, he went to Egypt, it is a downhill road. Because also, her, his faith already is not going up, but going down. So, when problems come, he finds solution in the world, but he did not cry out to God. The more that dapat in masinag kuman ni Abraham, Lord, we have this famine. We know you are our Elohim God who will supply everything that we need. But he moved out and find greener things or greener pasture for them. So when they are in Egypt, this was his experience. As we said also, it is a north place. And a north place symbolizes comfort and warmness. Comfort zone in the place of Egypt. Everything is okay. But in Bethel, South, suffering is there. Yes, sometimes also as Christian, as I've said, it's not easy that you need to give everything to God. Sacrifices, you need to sacrifice, you need to give your time to manage everything. But God is in that place, you will be strengthened. In Egypt, no problem. Everything is good for them. But little by little, their spiritual life is, being, is declining and they cannot experience already the movement of God. As it says, it is not the place of God. God's presence is not there. Though they are enjoying people today, they are enjoying worldly things, yes. But are they experiencing the presence of God? For us today, like this Sunday, we know it's Sunday. Then you are here. But one of your friends, let's come on, join with us in our birthday celebration. Oh, and tayo are swimming. But you will really fight your faith and aratoy kayo. You lose sometimes nga ala, sayang at adjaya kuma. But you find the true treasure, even though that they are enjoying outside, but you are also enjoying the very special moment with our Lord Jesus Christ. So that is the thing that we need to take it in our spiritual journey. Where do you want to go? Bethel or Egypt? Okay, Bethel. Once again, where do we want to go? Bethel or Egypt? Yes, of course, Pastora, Bethel. Yes. We desire, because of this thing, we don't like to go for a place of shamefulness. But no, we should have a good testimony to our Lord Jesus Christ. But I want to end this message with one, one important thing. When Abraham went to Egypt, he realized that in this place, I started to lie. In this place, I experienced disgrace. He realized, so he went back to Bethel. He did not just stay there. That's why also some Christians today, we know, maybe some members before, that he went, they went out from this church. But when they, because they want to explore, maybe it's good if I will go out from this church because of things, but God allowed them also to go, to be back in this house because they find or they know what, is the meaning of every situation upon their life. So, God also allowed these things for us to learn. It's not bad. But also in the moment, let us just allow that we will know. But let us not stay for a long time. It's a worldly things. Sayang ti aldaw. Sayang ti tawun. Manu tayo lang, manu nga tawun lang dapat ni aglive tayo. Let us live our life to the fullest. 
When God has given us opportunity to serve Him, let's serve Him. Let's worship Him. Let us give ourselves towards Him. So when they went there, and that's the time also, Abraham acquired possessions. Hmm. Wow! May it gaimot patsura adan na acquire na ti possession na. But as God said, you remember the blessings? You will inherit or rule over material things. That is not the blessings of Pharaoh. But God just used Pharaoh so that that blessing should be turned over to Abraham. We can find this one in Genesis chapter 12, verse 16. He treated Abraham well for her sake, and Abraham acquired sheep. When Abraham went to Egypt, he doesn't have anything. But when he went there, he acquired sheep, cattle, male and female, donkeys, men servants and maid servants, and camels. And that time, but why God blessed Abraham? So that in this way, he will be separated with Loth. I'll repeat. Lot was with them. Kasano nga ma-separate ba ni Lot? Di ba, daday, dadu, mabat mga friend you? Madi yun nga kadwa. Ay, kasano nga tanga pumanaw isuna? God will make a way. God makes a way for Abraham so that Lot will be separated. Lot also has many possessions. So Abraham acquired possessions, rich. He went back to Bethel and with the story, their servants are quarreling with each other. Because they don't have any place. Siyempre, adutito pa da. Adutito pa mat ni Loth. Ag-iinagawan da. Oh, spring again, this is the green pasture. Only this is the main area. They have a lot. In muna kami nga, in muna kami dito eh. Pumanaw kayo dyan eh. They are quarreling, but Abraham said, don't quarrel. Okay, we'll set apart. If you go to the left, I will go to the right. That is the time when Loth separated to Abraham. God blessed Abraham. And with that blessing of Abraham, that is a way for them that they were separated with each other. As we know, what is Lot? Meaning, concealment cover. Why God asked Lot to be separated with him? He cannot really hear the calling. Abraham did not really totally, totally obey the calling of God. Because there is Lot upon him. Even for us, sometimes, even though when God called us, we cannot obey God. Because there is an spiritual Lot in us. We need to live. We need to entrust. We need to remove. If these things will hinder us not to see the calling of our Lord Jesus Christ to us. So when Lot already departed from Abraham, the very important in here, what happened? Jesus, our Lord Jesus Christ, or God, had given or reminded His covenant to Abraham. I'll repeat. When only Lot separated with Abraham, the covenant once again was reminded. Kitan tayo, dapat ibagaan na ijay ahead. Hindi ada siya shekem. God will remind his covenant. No, because still Lot is there. But when totally he leave his country, totally he leave his family, no more. Only Sarai and him was there. God reminded his covenant. What was that covenant? In Genesis chapter 13, verses 14 to 17. Let's all read together. Let's go. The Lord said to Abram, after Lot had parted from him, lift up your eyes from where you are and look north and south, east and west. All the land that you will see, I will give to you and your offspring forever. Amen. Next. I will make your offspring like the dust of the earth so that if anyone would count the dust, then your offspring could be counted. Go walk through the length and breadth of the land, for I am giving it to you. Amen. Praise the Lord. God restored the covenant of Abraham towards him. For how many years? In Genesis chapter 12, I will bless you to become, to be a blessing to all nations. And it comes up, Genesis 13. How many years there was the span? But in here, little by little, God is removing all things that can hinder them. So even for us, our challenge this morning to end with, do not be far from the house of God. Yes, If we will be far from the house of God, we can experience the opposite way. Always hold the place of testimony of God. Why? What is in the place of testimony of God? The four things again, abundant spiritual food. With the word of God, it will strengthen our faith. And when we have this faith, we know how to live as a Christian and we will always experience the presence of God. 
But if you will not choose the, the, to go up, we will surely go down. It is the place of shamefulness. So always choose to soar to the place of testimony. Amen? Let us always desire to go up, not to go down. To the higher level of our faith this morning. As we said, the last challenge is that God will always be pleased when He always, always looking to His people, strengthening their faith to our Lord Jesus Christ. When Abraham experienced God in this place, knowing all these things, our prayer is that may we also experience God in this house. Every time that we are coming to church, do we feel the presence of God? This should be our prayer. Lord, every time that I will go, there, there must be a change in me. Every time that I go and I attend church, there will be empowerment of the Holy Spirit of me. I should go for a higher. It, should, it must not be a decreasing moment. How much are we growing in our life? No, kuma Christiano tayo for 30 years, kasanoy ng atat pamati tayo. Kararag ng mga mas agro grow pa. Amen. It must go deeper with our Lord Jesus Christ. As we will end, let us all bow our heads as the music team will come. And let us sing the song, Lord, the higher ground. Let us bow our heads. Lord, we thank you, God, for your message this morning. As we are knowing and learning the life of Abraham, you are using him that through, through his life, we will also know how is our journey in this world. As we don't know what will happen in our life, but we will put our confidence, our faith towards you, and even our faith, O oh Lord God, because we believe great things was already planned beforehand, O oh God, from you. So we, our prayer, may we always go up, O oh Lord God. We will not... Go far away from your house, from your presence. But we will always run in your very presence, O oh God. Because in your presence, O oh God, we can experience, O oh God, the plentiful, O oh God, abundant spiritual food that will give us spiritual nutrients, O oh God, to face this day. That will continually remove all the bitter roots in our life, O oh God. Lord, with this, O oh God, through the word of God, as you said, when we keep on hearing, O oh God, our faith will grow more, O oh God, for a higher level of dimension of our faith so that... Through this, O oh God, we will know how to live as a Christian, O oh God. Let there be always a change, Lord God, of our characters, of our attitudes, of our living. May we always testify your goodness of how do we live, O oh God, as our life, O oh God, is designed for you to always proclaim you, God, as our Elohim, God, and always humble ourselves as we are our creature only, O oh God. And even every time that we go, O oh God, we can experience your very presence Going away from you, we cannot experience the place of testimony instead, the place of shamefulness or the place of lie or everything. But Lord, we desire this morning, oh God, as we are here, little by little awaken our spiritual life. Little by little, Lord God, help us to go, Lord God, for a higher dimension of our faith. To always go, soar, even though problems may come because we believe. You are always there, O oh Lord God, to sustain and strengthen us. Lord, be glorified, God, and be magnified with this message that we have heard this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.